Yo, ladies and gentlemen, I am Z Zinman, and welcome back to Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup number 10. Yeah, finally number 10 after so many weeks of just me being uh, procrastinating and lazy. But yeah, as always, I am bringing you three of the hottest ships and three of the hottest mods from the Space Engineers Steam Workshop page for the last week. And yeah, we got a little bit of a doozy of an episode here, folks, so... Uh, let's get started. First of all, we've got the Azimuth Shield mod by uh, SEMAR for the DX11 Ready version. The original version is by Tumble TV, however, it is it isn't really compatible with DirectX11. And by the way, I'm running everything in DirectX9 like I always have, so just in case you're curious about that. Uh, yeah, so what that is, is, is this little guy here and he creates this big guy here once you place him now this pretty much is only a decorative motto by the way in case you're curious about my shadow I got the tungsten female armor because that's awesome but that's another video but so yeah this shield is pretty much it's decorative only it looks cool but you can't see through it but you can go through it and that's because um, a long time ago, in days of your Keen Software House decided it would be a fantastic idea to uh, change the way mods work so that anything outside of the placement box would um, the collision the collision meshes wouldn't work for anything outside of a pla uh, anything outside of the placement box. So this is the only thing inside of the placement box here, and because this is outside of it, it doesn't work. So it's rather, rather unfortunate, but you have to admit, it, it, it looks cool. It really looks cool. You could put this on like the side of a ship. In fact, I've got the azimuth fighter that I should have pasted in to show you. But you could put this on the side of a ship and it looks like awesome because it's completely like there's, uh, it's completely, it's like a hologram pretty much. So pretty cool looking aesthetic. And um, I got a couple of other notes here, um, but yeah. So uh, just in case you are, uh, you have the Azimuth, uh, the um, Azimuth Industries Mega Mod Pack, uh, like I do, then it's going to look almost the same as the regular uh, Azimuth mods, and it looks like I've. Uh, sort of got that a little bit screwed up. Uh, yeah, so uh, when you download the DX11 ready version, uh, please be aware that these black guys are actually the DX11 ready ones, and then the yellow guys are the standard DX9 ones that Tumble TV made. So just in case you're a little bit confused, that's the difference right there. The new ones are black, and the old ones are yellow. So yeah. Just sum it up, yellow one's DX9 only, black one's DX11. So, yep, moving on swiftly to CodeCat cockpits from CodeCat. Uh, that's these guys over here. These standing cockpits that look a little bit like um, tables. Uh, and these guys over here, actually. So, yep, they look also pretty dang sweet they are I believe they're DX11 ready for uh, ready versions here uh, just I should say DX11 ready uh, because there are no other versions obviously but uh, so no matter how much uh, CoCat loves to talk to subscribers and visitors it feels silly to answer questions that have not uh, that had not needed to be asked if the questioner uh, has looked at the spec file so please read the spec file before you ask any questions it's linked in the description of the mod so go and check that out before you have any questions if that doesn't answer them, then, uh, please feel free to fire away but so we've got the standing cockpit version one I believe that's this uh, that's this guy here um, and the standing cockpit version two and then the standing cockpit version 3 
Uh, there's uh, version 3 right here, which is the same as this one, uh, version 3.1. This one's pressurized, as you can see by the fact that there's a connector on the bottom of it. So, yeah, they're basically all the same thing, just standing cockpits, but these, uh, these, these guys over here, they actually protect you, obviously. So, to get in, they've got these handy little open panels, so you just press one of those and bang you're in I really feel like I'm in a ship right now this is super cool um of course it looks like my avatar is a little bit freaking out so that's strange it must be something to do with the armor because yesterday I had the standard uh, space engineer suit on and it didn't do that but look at the inside of this this is so cool. It's like the um, it's like Colt's console co console command pack, except green. Now, I've always liked Colt's console command pack and all those sci-fi displays over there. Look at that! Look at that rain meter stuff there. That's so cool. And of course, you got plenty of visibility from about halfway of the cockpit on up. Yeah, not really much else to say. It's a cockpit. It protects you. You can put it into a flying saucer-like ship, and it looks awesome! Seriously, how can you go wrong with that? I mean, you got 360-degree panoramic view, so nothing's gonna sneak up on you. You're standing up, it's super compact, and you can put in a flying saucer. So sweet! And then, of course, you've got this one over here, which is version 4, which is also pressurized. Uh, the windows aren't as big, but in return for that, you get a little bit more protection from what I understand. Uh, I don't know, but, yep, yeah, so that's basically just, that's basically them. And then obviously these guys are just like you're standing in a booth or something. Wow, that was a failure. That was a massive failure. So these guys are just like, like you're standing there, like you see. My arms are a little bit stretched and look a little bit weird but yeah so you just stand there usually with your engineer's hands on the display and just look like a sci-fi badass pretty much and yeah well um the third mod okay I'll cheat a little bit with this one uh, because it's technically a, a blueprint but a, it's a weapon, and B, I didn't know it was a blueprint until after I downloaded it and didn't uh, see any new mods in my mods list. So, this is the Bell Cannon with Select Fire by Goat Scope. That, that, that name is weirdly awesome for some reason. I don't know why. I couldn't possibly tell you. So, that's this guy right here. I've put the thrusters on me. Uh, he doesn't usually come with thrusters but ooh, yeah yeah it's pretty big it's a pretty big gun it's eight CSD battle cannons all arranged in a Gatling light uh, light formation and it's got two modes of fire it's got uh, continuous fire and it's got burst fire continuous fire is it keeps firing just one shot out of the top barrel but it, it, that's the thing, it just keeps firing for a longer period, whereas burst shots very for, is very short burst, just very rapid fire. So that's uh, the difference between those things, and I'm going to place it on a cockpit since the one I had here seems to have been deleted. I couldn't tell you why. And um, that, oh, sorry. My bad. Sorry, gang. Why can't I place you? Well, that's a little odd. Ah, man. I wish it would let me place the cockpit. I don't know why it's not letting me place it. Well, that's, uh, that's weird. Like, that's really weird. But so, yeah, like I said, uh, uh, like I was telling you guys about uh, the two modes of fire, burst fire and continuous fire, uh, they they lay down quite a lot of freaking damage per shot. Maybe I can actually uh, do it from here. Continuous fire timer. Oh yeah, so I'm going to trigger that. 
this is the continuous fire mode. As you can see, well, it's kind of off-centered, but... So it's firing out of the bottom cannon, rather, my bad. Just one shot at a time. Used for, for keeping enemies under cover and just, you know, keeping their... Keeping your sort of sights on them. I'm gonna wait for that timer to run out because I don't want to screw anything up. Okay, so it wasn't stopping, so um, I just decided to delete the reactor. So, kind of unfortunate that, that I didn't get to show you guys the burst fire mode because it just wouldn't stop. But, so I guess that's just enough to give you a basic idea of exactly how massively powerful this thing is. Um, but, yeah. It's, it's hugely, hugely powerful. I'll, I'll say this much about the sound effects. Ooh, they don't do justice, man. They do not do justice to exactly how much damage that thing can dish out. It's ridiculous. So, we're moving on to the first of three ships or stations. And in this case, it is TTC Colony Outpost by one cog Cogernaut. Tiny little house here pretty much just yeah this is literally it but the thing is is it's meant for easy deployment uh, in foreign territories that's one thing about it. it doesn't have airlocks so you're pretty much guaranteed to get blasted out every time you enter your house unless you remember to depressurize the oxygen system first and this is literally it like I just ran the length and width of the entire house. Uh, well, I say house is the station, but it reminds me of a house. It reminds me of a house. So over here, you've got a uh, med bay, and then you've got a cryopod, and then three more cryopods over there. Some storage. In fact, you've got storage connectors outside. If I could show you that very quickly. So. Uh, this is how you generate oxygen here. You got these oxygen farms sticking out and then um, to power the whole thing you've got eight solar panels or yeah one, uh, six, twelve rather, twelve solar panels. Uh, two gats up top to defend yourself from incoming meteors and then two gats uh, well one gat above each of the four doors to protect your abode from uh, nefarious evil bad guys and one connector to a side so you can just back your vehicle on up after you have uh, after you've been out exploring and collecting resources and just wait connect it on up right there and then uh, once you activate the connector system the conveyor system rather you can just go right here and yeah your stuff is just right there ready for you to collect it very easy, very simple to deploy. It doesn't require that many resources to build. That's its main. Uh, that, that's its main sort of advantage is that it doesn't require anything to build this. Literally, just some light armor, some oxygen tanks, some cargo conveyors. Uh, I think uh, the med bay may, may be the most uh, the most resource heavy feature of them all here that and the cryopods but that's it like that's literally it just bing bang boom some quick resource resource collecting you are ready to place this blueprint in your world and it's gonna serve you very well for all of your space engineers needs and you've even got a little bit of space here uh, to maybe put a TV a little bit of a couch here some end tables and of course you could get rid of the cryopods if you wanted to have a little bit more of a conventional bed sort of thing so you really can't go wrong you really cannot go wrong at all by downloading this especially if you're into just stuff that's you know meant to uh, meant to be set up really quickly and just like that you know sorry I hit I hit the mic are you guys okay because I hit all y'all all right everybody's good well, well that, that that guy's got a nosebleed but whatever we're just gonna move on from him Yep, and that's literally it. That's the that's the shortest uh, station review I have ever done. So before we leave, we're actually going to remember to depressurize the oxygen system here. Um, air vents uh, depressurize on, 
uh, yeah, I believe that's, I believe that is it, yeah, so, that has been depressurized, so next time we try to come in, we shouldn't get blown straight out of our door, that would be nice. And now we are moving on to SIM Heavy Prospecting Vehicle HVPV by Insurgent No Mods Survival Ready. And that's this big, huge. Look at this thing. I. How, how, how do you make a land vehicle this big? It's huge. Uh, the vehicle was made for Auto MCD's June competition, so there's a link in the description of the mod on the Steam Workshop page if you would like to go and have a quick gander at other entries to that uh, competition. Vehicle details, name, heavy prospecting vehicle, class, mining ground vehicle, role, prospecting and mine. So if you don't know what a prospecting vehicle is, it's just where, uh, uh, it's just a vehicle that's meant to explore uncharted territories and check out the prospects of sustainable living there. So, this guy is meant to roam plant surfaces and have a, uh, have a gander at all of the natural, like, rock formations and minerals and materials and uh, other stuff like that. And this, by the way, this is, well, first of all, just let the size sink in here a little bit. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Each of these blocks is, I believe, about two meters square, which is about two feet, uh, which is about four feet by my, and I don't know. I, I can't do maths. I cannot do maths. But so this is the drill bit here. One of two drill bits actually, because the drill has two modes. Uh, one is mine, and the other is trench, and this is the trench drill bit over here. So we're going to hop inside and actually check out the interior of this thing, because you could live aboard it, like literally live aboard it. The only thing that's missing is a mess. And there's plenty of space for a mess. Like plenty of space for a mess. So. We've got this vent set to depressurize. We're going to pressurize it by pressing that button there. Boom, we are pressurized. So we should now be good to explore our uh, our huge freaking ground vehicle. I almost called it a ship, like literally, I almost called it a ship. So to your left from the door and then up here, we have the main cockpit. This is the literal, literal main cockpit. And so I've got the parking brake on now, I believe. Do I not? Um, hold on, let me check my speed. This thing is super, super duper slow. Yeah, we are barely, barely moving. But the speed actually isn't an object, really, because it's got other uh, prospecting drones that come out from this rear drone bay that you see right here the stop 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 yeah it also doesn't have any reverse thrusters or gyroscopes no reverse thrusters no gyroscopes no anything like that but so I don't know how you deploy a drone I'll admit that much but just in case you want a little bit more speed or a little bit more compactness so you could go and explore stuff like that little cave over to our right there you could very well do that you you just find a way to get the drones out of the drone bay and then uh, they're remote controlled so you can fly them safely if you have a crash hey all that happens all this happens is damage to the drone you haven't died or anything so that's cool so we're gonna try to stop it by reversing and I don't think we're actually gonna stop it really um, in fact, we're, we might smack into the rock. Uh, oh, yeah, you can actually do this. You can just literally crank up the gravity generators so that it can't move. Uh, by the way, they're called space balls. And yeah, I would love to make a space balls joke, but well, let's just say 
my my brain when it comes to spaceballs jokes does doesn't really move at ludicrous speed. So now that we've got the spaceballs, aka gravity generators, cranked up, and we've got the ship stopped. By the way. Uh, just in case you need a little bit of extra grip, that's a very good way to get it. As you can see now, the ship, the vehicle, the vehicle, MCZ, now accelerates and decelerates quite a lot faster than it did before. So that's always helpful. And it can uh, obviously help it climb whatever surfaces it might need to climb. So... Up here, this is actually where I guess the captain guy would go. Uh, well, I say that it's got a couple of other cockpits here. I, uh, well, I thought I, I thought I remembered a couple of other cockpits. Maybe that's maybe that's just the mining area. But so this is where the captain guy would oversee things from, and down there would be the pilot, uh, or joker, as I like to call him. Back here! Guess what this is? Crew quarters! It's crew quarters, ladies and gentlemen, in a land vehicle! In a land vehicle! It's, I believe, 20 cryopods, uh, uh, 5, uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, uh, 10, uh, let me see, that would be 16 uh, cryopods, so it sleeps a crew of 16. I think it may actually have uh, uh, have capacity for more. I think it uh, may have more control stations than just 16 in it. So uh, you might have to sleep in shifts just a little bit. And over here we've got some... Uh, well, we had some uh, we had some cockpits that uh, some control stations that had to do with systems oversight. That may be why I couldn't place a control station. It's just uh, the the cockpits are a little bit glitchy in this world for some reason. That's a little bit strange. But so we've got systems oversight here, and uh, these guys would oversee well. Just various systems around the around the vehicle. All right, uh, they probably oversee oxygen and stuff. You've got uh, these displays all around the vehicle. There's a, there are a couple in the mining area as well that just give you a quick rundown of various uh, systems and things and inventories. So um. Uh, the so you can see a simpler one's idle. Uh, all of this is idle except oxygen generators are on, which is always good. And then up here you've got your inventory for all materials and everything. Over here your large reactors. And by the way, it's mirrored left to right, so it's the exact same thing over on the other side of the ship. So let me actually hop down to the main deck and show you guys the mining capabilities this thing has because let me assure you they're ridiculous yeah uh, these uh, there, there should be cockpits here but unfortunately there aren't for some reason there'd be like two per uh, one per block over here one per yellow block so that's a little bit strange but so uh, we've got uh, this borehole extend timer block that's this dude here and it takes a while. It really, really, really takes a while. So, uh-oh, I think we're moving. Are we moving? I think we are. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, we're moving at 0.3 meters a second. So hopefully that doesn't screw things up for us. But let's actually go outside while we're at it and check this out because, yeah, that that's probably going to be absolutely legit cool. So, we're going to open you up and close you and then depressurize this vent here. And it's just, uh, 
Yeah, we still got blown out a little bit, but fortunately the uh, fortunately the oxygen wasn't so high that we really got dashed against it. So we're moving a little bit upwards. Yeah, look at this. It digs a hole that's about 10 meters deep. So more than deep enough to set up a base or really mine for materials and things like that. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, 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 that's not pleasant. That's not, that's not nice. That's not nice. We're getting out of there. Well, that was a little bit weird. It looks like the ship's really, really trying to move. I wonder if it has something to do with the uh, gravity generator space ball thing settings that I had going on. Let me actually go and fix those real quick. Um, that could have been a very negative situation. So, hurry up. Let's get to the front. Let's get to the front before we blow up in a huge fiery mess of, uh, uh, of crap. That would be that would be bad. That would be very unpleasant indeed. Oh crap, I've taken the wrong route. This is not the way. But we're, we're going this way anyway. Let's, we, we are working on borrowed time, guys. We're generating two Gs here. So, um, yes, you can't, you guys can go back up to like one ton apiece. <sighs> Disaster, dare I say, narrowly averted. We're going to crank them back up until it stops moving again. Come on, stop moving, stop moving. I think we've already broken it a little. I don't know how in the world that thing's still holding on. Okay, so, so, wait, stop, 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 stop. Man, I'm gonna be in an all day freaking battle. Now we're defying gravity. That's great, that's great. Well, this is going to sign the tits up. Okay. We're good, we're good, we're good. We got this, we got this. I swear, this wasn't much, that much of a problem when I was testing it. So that was a little bit odd. But now we're going to go and head back to the drone bay. All the way back here. Past the yellow brick road. Gotta shut this door first. And then open this door. And the hangar bay is just past door number two here. So let me open that up. Bang, hangar bay, yeah. Yeah, drone bay 101. This is how you do a drone bay, pretty much just big enough. You've got a drone here. Well, actually, you've got several drones. These guys float, so these, uh, these could be used for exploring uh, higher up regions, and they've also got very different tools on them, I believe, or are they all... Yeah, they're all, um, well, the ones that do have tools on them are, uh, they've got mining drills on them, but you've also got the one with wheels that can survey ground surfaces a little bit more closely. That broke off, we are still moving. So that sucks. But to deploy the guy with wheels, you press this button, and then to, uh, well, are we, have we stopped moving? Uh, somewhat, we're bumping. Okay, we, we're stopped. I think it should be safe to actually uh, go and press this. So that opens this hangar door. And then it deploys the uh, it deploys this drone guy. It should oh yeah, you've got to extend it first. My bad. So then, well, it should be extending right now unless something in the system is broken. Is it extending? No, it is not. In fact, extending. Let me try that again. Make sure I got it this time. Yep, so there it goes. It's extending now. So once it gets all the way down to the bottom of its range, it's going to disconnect. And then, well, provided 
you've taken control of the drone, it'll uh, it'll uh, allow you to go and roam around, and then you can drive the drone back down under the connector, and then hop out of drone view, and then come over here and retract it by using this button over here. So I wonder. I saw a control panel over here that I didn't get to test out. Um, Open hangar door start timer block. I missed it. There we go. So that should open, if I'm not mistaken, should open this. No, it has not. That's a little bit weird. But so you basically get the idea of this whole hangar bay thing back here. Just in case it doesn't open. Yep. It will not open. But now, well, I believe we're on a slight slant here. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to try to pick up the drone here and see if that works. So it's extending again and now it's going to pick up that drone. This is an issue that I had before. This is not good. Yeah, we just sort of had to screw up the timing there a little bit. But it is extending. We're moving away from it, though. So it's a little bit funky, yes. But look at this. It's huge, man. And this door has finally decided to open. So that's good. So you can fly these drones out here. So that is the... Uh, that is a rather long-winded review of the uh, SIM uh, Sim Heavy Prospecting Vehicle HVPV by Insurgent. And just one other thing. Apparently this thing is dropped from orbit. How? How, is it, how do you drop this from orbit? First of all, what is the size of the freaking mothership that this thing comes from? And second of all, I, I don't know if this thing is aerodynamic enough to be dropped from orbit. Because <laughs> look at it. It, it, it. it makes Caterpillar freaking dump trucks look like panty freaking smart cars the size is huge it's absolutely huge so we've got just one more ship to go and review that's ss3 ne flat top by loading unfortunately well i couldn't uh, get that oh okay i couldn't get that to paste into this world so we're gonna have to go to its workshop world and play with it so I'll see you guys on the other side of this jump gun. So here she is, the NE flat top by loading. Look at this majesty. Oh yes, this is. <laughs> uh, hold on, I just got I just gotta get a screen cap of that real quick. That's ridiculous. Um, okay, yeah. Oh man, this is this is a huge 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 ship. Hmm absolutely absolutely immense there is no description by the way i'm not exactly sure therefore what kind of ship this is something tells me it's a destroyer though because look at the look at all of the guns yeah huge huge number of guns also surprisingly a lot of hangar space how much well you've got those two side hangers over there uh, over in a thatly direction and you've got this massive massive like I'm talking huge freaking huge hanger up front that's like oh my god WTF so are you guys ready it's got a lot of heavy armor uh, coating it in fact I believe this thing may actually be surrounded under a, a, in a layer of heavy armor with some light armor on the outside. Um, I say that because I was testing one of my ships versus the Azimuth fighter and after I managed to get through the initial layer of light armor there's a layer of heavy armor underneath it so I think it's got a little bit of a sneaky, sneaky bit of heavy armor and all this light armor. So, yeah, this hangar's huge. 
just, I'm going to, well, there's no gravity here, actually. I need to get a bit further in. Okay, so, I'm just gonna stand here and let you look at it. That's massive, 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 massive. And then you've got connectors, refueling connectors on the sides to refuel all your ships and to uh, transfer goods to and fro. And then, uh, so to get in, you nearly stand here and wait for this hangar door to open. Uh, strange. Uh, at first, uh, when I first opened this world, oh, be sure to depressurize before you go in or leave the ship. But strange thing, side hangers before, uh, uh, before, well, the first time I tried to load this world up, they actually worked, they actually opened when I walked up to them. So I'm not exactly sure what caused those guys to break. It's a little bit weird, but it's not that big of an issue. I've still got a fairly apparent way in here. And then through this door, you've got living quarters. And then back there is, uh, I believe, access to the side hangers. So yeah, pretty decently big living quarters. Seats, or uh, rather, sleeps for people to a bunk bed. And I believe if I lay down, yeah, I can actually lay down and look at my lovely form. Because these are actually the version the versions of the bunk bed that are uh, that have been updated for DX11. I believe DX11 came out after the big old huge ragdoll update. So yeah, uh, you've got uh, yep six crew quarters, so it sleeps quite a number of people. By the way, you'll notice all these mods. Yeah, about that. Uh, do not. Under any circumstances at all whatsoever, try to convert this into a blueprint because I tried to paste it into the world that we were just in and I couldn't get to actually paste in because the world file for this thing uses up literally four pages, four entire Microsoft Word letter size single space pages of mods like this guy and I know that they're all not in use here but I believe just the sheer number of mods is what causes the ship to um, to take so long pasting in in fact I believe it's got like he's got a couple of skybox mods here so I believe it may freeze upon trying to overwrite the skybox, which, as we know, isn't a thing that can happen in Space Engineers, nor should it ever be. So, yep, a little living course here. You've got a living area, complete with wooden table. Nice, luxurious wood finish there. A few benches, a little bendy bench here. And uh, even a pl potted plant and screens off to the sides here so that you can keep up with the latest in galactic news or uh, watch other stuff. Uh, and I don't know why we're going back there. We already know it's back there. We are already back there. Up the staircase, I believe we have the captain's course away the captain's course yep a Rooney would look like that's the like this is the way to the captain's quarters I'll say quarters uh, more so command area slash quarters this would well, well this is sort of a I guess a receptions desk thing because actually no no this is this is the mess oh well, yeah I got a little bit discombobulated there for a second so it's the mess, and then uh, we've got up here, I believe we've got, let me think for a second. We've got med bay up here. I can remember that for sure. Uh, then up here, some systems maintenance stuff. 
And back on down here, let's see. Yeah, this is actually, this is the bridge here. Pretty cool looking bridge. The captain's area is up here, I believe. Yeah, the, well, the uh, captain's seat is up here, and it's a two-deck uh, two bridge, which is really cool. To get to the top deck, if you're not the captain, you just walk around there. It's a little bit dangerous, uh, but, yeah, whatever, and then you've got huge view screens. I just want to point out that I really like the way this is all very much inside the ship. There's literally, it's well, well within the bowels of the ship. So, it's going to be hard to get to for intruders. It's going to be, excuse me, it's going to be especially hard to get to for any attackers. Because by the time they figure out where your bridge is, uh, you're going to have long since deployed fighters and shot those guys down. So there's little chance of actually being discovered, shall we say. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool, although there's no railings here. So if you fall off, you're pretty much dead, but you're also an idiot. That's what they, that's what they, uh, that's what happens to drunken captains. Y you know, the thing, the thing about the ship is, I uh, know I can't, I can't go Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup or any video of mine without making a Mass Effect reference, but this reminds me of something like Quarians would live in because it's got sort of that run-down aesthetic and it's got a lot of living quarters, but it's also got a lot of cramped spaces as well. And it's got a um, sort of very small central mess here. It just gives off the overall feeling of old technology and that uh, being that the Quarian migrant fleet from Mass Effect is mostly made up of old ships that are three centuries old at least. Oh by the way, these are the toilets here. But yeah, this does generally seem like something the migrant fleet would use. To yeah, so We've got toilets behind all these doors, nice and private, and then sinks on the outside. I can actually see why, because uh, the stupid one object per block restriction. Keen, you need to make it so we can place things in blocks, place blocks in blocks, come on. So you've got sinks out here and then toilets in here because this is all literally one block. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but you do have these nice, fantastic, lovely showers and hanger, uh, hangers, really? And uh, these, the closets, the closet things. Uh, uh, I completely forgot, which is strange because I, I don't know. <laughs> But places to store stuff. I'll just, I'll just say that. Places to store stuff. You've got those as well. Down here, I wonder what's down here. I don't think I've actually been down here. I don't think I've uh, considered going down here. Oh, so we are back at, yeah, we're back at square one here. Uh, I'll admit for all of this ship's size, it doesn't actually have much explorable interior. But we're going to open this up. And behind this is the preparation area for fighter pilots and stuff like that. I'm also missing a reactor room. It's somewhere, I believe it's further up, maybe? Yeah, come on, come on. So this is a very nice big airlock here. And welcome to the side hangers. Not as much space as the as the front hanger, but pretty pretty big space. You can store a lot of fighters in here, man. If you, uh, I'll just say this: if you have any uh, any enemies, they're not going to last long in front of your fleet of either many dozens of fighters or many hundreds of drones. Down here 
is, uh, well, this is, uh, uh, this is engineering down here, and then we go towards the red flashy light, and then that's painted glass, so there's nothing of promise over here, although the gyroscopes are in there very well hidden and protected. And, yeah, as you can see, just more heavy armor. This thing has a lot of heavy armor, like I was saying. A lot of heavy armor, so it's pretty heavy, but you're going to be well protected in exchange. So I think it's a fair trade, really, if you're into ships that have a lot of heavy armor. And here's the reactor room, by the way. Look at this. <laughs> this is one of the coolest sights I've ever seen in Space Engineers. This is something straight out freaking Farscape. You got the weird color palette, the purple lights, and the green of the glowing azimuth rea ion reactors, and some more uh, uh, engineering over here. So I guess that engineering bay over there was just for the gyroscopes and other uh, critical systems, and then this would be specifically to uh, maintain the reactors and batteries and propulsion systems and so on. Uh, it looks like we've got another level up there. I wonder if we can actually get to that. Um, let me do some Dexter's flying here. Um, there should be ways to get to it. Unless it's just completely sectioned off and you have to use your... Yeah, you have to use your jetpack to get up here, so... A little bit inconvenient, but that's uh, that's all fine and good because the, there's probably some other stuff behind this armor that prevented the creator loading from. Yeah, as you can see, there's gyroscopes there, so you can either fill this area here with gyroscopes and uh, section it off almost uh, section it off so that you couldn't use, so that you can actually get up there without a jetpack or he could get rid of the gyroscopes and make the ship almost impossible to maneuver so fair trade fair trade and then up here is just a little bit of a crawl space yeah I'm very very thorough like stupidly thorough <laughs> just a tiny 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 little infinitesimal crawl space and obviously you've got some cargo there for your ships to um, go uh, exploring and bring their cargo back and things like that and yeah that's that that's literally the entire ship that's the length and width of it so now we're going to get back to the cockpit to the captain's area and give this thing a little bit of a fly oh yeah this is the captain's quarters by the way I just sort of incidentally stumbled upon it coming out is uh, literally straight back from the uh, side hangers through the through the airlocks and then up here very nice captain's quarters I will admit that over here you've got cryo sleep uh, areas and a little computer at the end with how to maintain them all and to oversee and make sure that uh, uh, crew members don't die in their sleep which is always a good thing so over here very luxurious captain's quarters You've got a uh, bed behind, well, looks like it would be behind curtains. It lo this looks like it would, like, close. Uh, it's, in fact, it looks completely like an upside-down door. Is that, that is exactly what it is. It's a door. So you can get your love interest there for some pre-final mission lovey-dovey. And then over here, a strange connector system. Uh, that runs through there. Over here, well, you've got even more. So I guess, actually, yeah, this is a, a senior staff sort of area. And then you've got a small captain's infirmary here. So not really much of an infirmary, but you get respawn points. It's, a, it's well within the ship, so you don't have to worry about being bombarded to death and back. And then a bed for recovering from your injuries overseen by HAL! So, yeah, let's get back to the captain's cockpit and give this thing a little bit of a fly, shall we? 
he said, desperately trying to imitate Ecto Sage. And I have no idea where I am. Just like Sage 2. Oh, by the way, this, uh, I thought I'd cover this too. It's just an airlock to the outside. That's literally it. This goes down. It's a little prep area and then a standard door airlock to the outside. So there is that also. So here we are. We are in charge of the flat top and yep, look at that mass. Just just look at that mass. A seven thousand eight uh, a seven million eight hundred and sixty seven thousand four hundred and thirty two kilograms. Massive. One of the heavier ships that we've actually reviewed here on the Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup. Uh, our reactors are uh, currently putting out 5.46 gigawatts. We've got 1,050 gyroscopes and enough fuel to last us five hours as we roam this planet. And yeah, the acceleration for this for 87 million kilograms is huge. We're already at 10 meters to the second. I've seen ships with half this weight that don't accelerate like a quarter that fast. Of course, we're powered by a combination of Sage's industrial thrusters and Titan engines, so this is sort of the power that you would pretty much expect from a ship of that potency. Yeah, look at that engine array. Uh, as far as side thrust is concerned, we got uh, looks like eight of Sage's industrial thrusters on each side and then for reverse thrust we've got uh, yeah we've got a couple of Titan engines and uh, four I believe that is industrial thrusters and then some other uh, standard looks like large thrusters back there so we're already up to over 50 meters to the uh, meters a second. So now we are going to make sure our inertia dampeners are on. And we're going to stop it and see how quick this thing gets stopped. Yeah, that's quick. That's properly, properly, properly fast. We are already down to, well, we're down to stopped. Now, pretty much. Stop now. Yeah, the <laughs> serious, serious firepower with this thing. And uh, as far as side thrust is concerned, not quite as potent, but you know, side thrust never is quite as potent as forward and backward thrust. So kind of to be expected. Yeah, absolutely awesome ship. Easily one of the coolest we've had uh, in on the Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup. And before I let you guys go, yes, those are in fact external uh, ship parking areas so uh, if you need those for whatever reason then they're there they're there but it also looks a little bit like a regular battleship too especially the um, like a regular modern day battleship not a futuristic battleship battleship because it's all long and narrow and stuff and you've got a little bit of a runway style thing complete with lettering on it and yeah, uh, the guns also are arranged in a very similar way. So awesome stuff from loading easily the best ship that I've ever come across that has no description. You can't go wrong with this, just like I was saying. But I do want to stress again before I go, do not try to convert the ship into a blueprint because it won't work I that much I can absolutely guarantee you oh uh, yeah it it looks like I got that a little bit screwed up we, uh, literally all of the reverse thrusters aren't Titan engines are Sage's industrial thrusters but I will stress again do not under any circumstances try to convert this into a blueprint because the universe will implode your computer, well, your computer won't freeze, but your game will freeze. It will steadily hike up, uh, hike up memory usage until it overtakes all of your memory, and then, yeah, it's gonna, your entire computer is gonna run like dog poo poo until you sort that out. So that's a little bit of a downside. You have to use it as a world. It can't be converted into a blueprint. So, 
another unfortunate that, but hey, if you want asteroids, then you could just turn asteroids on in the world and you could just go a little bit and it would automatically start generating asteroids for you anyway. So you could, uh, you could basically make it into a different world by changing the skybox and enabling asteroids and that sort of thing. So it's not all bad and you can still sort of have the experience that you want with it, but it's a little bit harder than it should be. Um, yeah, four pages of mods were used in the creation of well not in the creation of this ship there are a few that I can identify that were not but if you want to go ahead and download all the mods anyway that the ship uses I've posted a few comments below uh, in the comments section of the Steam Workshop page not down there not down there in the YouTube comments section in the Steam Workshop page comments section listing all of the mods that this ship would require in order to try to con uh, convert it into a blueprint but you're not going to really need to download any of them so just uh, so just in case you know any of them will look neat to you you can still go down there and uh, download them anyway but that has been it for this week's weekly workshop roundup if you like this video, then go ahead and bitch slap that like button. If you really, really like it and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hey, I've been MC Zinman. You've been awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video. MCZ out.